जय हिंद एवरी वन टूडे वी विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिया दिस सब्जेक्ट इज टॉट इन बैचलर ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी इन एपीजे अब्दुल कलाम टेक्निकल यूनिवर्सिटी इन थर्ड ईयर सो लेट अस स्टार्ट विद अवर टू डेज लेक्चर इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन आस्पेक्ट ऑफ इंडिया हाउ डज द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वॉज मेड वट आर द की parts of it and how the government of india or the people govern by it so let us start so let us talk about our country first india its area is the sixth largest in the world with 3.278 million square kilometer and before independence its area was 4.316 million square kilometer as we know in 1947 our country was divided into two parts the, the first was east pakistan and west pakistan and uh, one of them was liberated in the year 1971 also called as uh, now the country is called as bangladesh so our country is home to one of the largest number of different socio cultural groups based on race religion language etc the major religion in india is hinduism with 80% of the population following this with islam as near about 14% christianity as 2.3% and rest is sikhism buddhism jainism and others the social tension and conflicts arising from this diversity often leads to growth of divisive tendency like communalism religious linguism and also major hurdle to economic development and survival of democracy our main motto is university in diversity now let us start so we can consider or understand the constitution as the set of rules followed in football like almost everything we do it are followed by the set of rules there are rules for games like soccer for social clubs and employees in the workplace there are also rules imposed by morality and custom that plays important role in telling us what to do and what not to do for example if i talk about soccer in or soccer or football it is governed by set of rules like 22 players play this game 11 player in the one side and 11 player in the opposite side with three referees so these three referees impose the laws of the game to all these players so if when a player do something against the rules the referee must take action and it can be taken as a sent off the player during the game so below these images depict something this red card shows the player has to go from the field so these like the set of rules this is something what constitution also does so in constitution it is the supreme law of the country it is also called as a bible or gita or granth in which every uh, every citizen of india or every government citizen companies everything that they should follow set of rules and these rules are defined by the constitution and all others law have to conform to constitution so need is uh, we need laws in society so our society can regulate and work properly they are designed to protect us from property and to ensure that everyone in society believes the way that the community expects them to so these law also tell us what to accept as a consequence of our actions laws have been glued and kept society together without laws these would be complete anarchy so these constitution has some set of rules which our society has to follow now now let us uh, elaborate further uh, what do we mean by this constitution it is a set of fundamental principles or established precedents according to which a state or other organization is governed what this does this document contains it contains laws and rules which determine and describe the form of government the relationship between the citizens and the government it is also called constitution now till january 22 it contains 448 articles in 25 parts 12 schedules and 104 amendments so this is nothing but a set of books so the original copies of indian constitution are written in both hindi and english and are kept in special helium field case in the library of parliament of india helium field case protects its pages from being tampered off or torn off so this is an image of actual constitution of india which was 
uh, made in year between year 1947 to 1950. Now, it lays down the framework defining political principles. It establishes the structure, proceedings, powers and duties of government institution. It also sets out fundamental rights, directive principle and duties of citizens. One of the criticism that it faces was it, it lacks the originality and mostly it has been borrowed from the from the constitution of other countries. Nevertheless, it has distinguished features of its own and it's unique in many ways. Now, in general, the constitution is the supreme law of land. All other laws have to conform to the constitution. Now, it is concerned with two main aspects, the relationship between different level of government, different level of government means in government there are various ministries, there is president, so, uh, so uh, government, president is not part of government, there is prime minister, the cabinet ministers, the state ministers, all of this fall, form part of government and the other aspect of constitution is, is the people and all of these follow the rules which are governed or framed in the constitution. So, what is it anyway? The role of constitution is the relationship between government and its people. Like government, it contains three parts. Legislative. So, the duty of legislatives is to make laws. Judiciary. Judiciary is, the role of judiciary is to interpret these laws and execute means the law and informant agencies which enforces these laws like the police agency. Next, so the union government parts is judiciary and in judiciary we know there is a supreme court and there is a high court. There is also a legislator, legislature. In legislature there is president, there is Lok Sabha which is also called as lower house and Rajya Sabha which is also called as upper house of the parliament. Then there is executive. Executive contains council of ministers, the president also and the prime ministers. Now, this is the constitution of India uh, page in which uh, it is written as the people of India having solemnly resolved to the constitution to sovereign democratic republic and to ensure its all citizens justice, liberty, equality, fraternity to in our constitution assembly. So, these are the right which were given by 26th day of November in 1945 to 1949. Now, let us dive into the history of Indian constitution. So, a government of India act came in 1858, then Indian council act in 1861, 1892, 1909 and 1919. Now, according to this act, legislative councils came into existence in all provinces. Provinces means earlier India was divided into many provinces, small, small provinces which were ruled by the kings at that time of the government. In other words, the British adopted a biochemical structure with separate central and provincial government. So, central government will be which will govern all the provinces and the provincial government will be governing the this provinces separately. So, this was also the first time when people could elect their own representative through direct election. The constitution later adopted this quasi federal and biochemical structure. Now, the Government of India Act 1935, what did this act says? The enactment of this law is one of the most important events in the history of our constitution. Firstly, this law divided power into governance into federalists. Federalist meaning there will be people who will be governing this. A provincial list and a concurrent list. Even the Indian constitution adopted a division of power between the central and state government. As we know in, in, in our Indian constitution, uh, there are central, there is central government and there is state government. So, state government can only manage their own state, whereas central government manage the whole country. Now, coming to the constituent assembly, members of the provincial assembly indirectly elect members of constituents assembly. This assembly served as the first parliament of independent India and first met in 19 December 1946 in Delhi. After independence, the assembly elected Dr. Rajendra Prasad as his chairman and began drafting the constitution. So, Dr. Rajinder Prasad was also the first president of India. Its main characteristics are, it is the longest written institution. It is taken from various sources, federal system with unitary features, Parliamentary system of government, balance between sovereignty of parliament and judiciary, supremacy, independent and integrated judicial system, 
Directive principle of state policy partly rigid and flexible. Also, flexible mean uh, we can amend, amend, we can do amendment in this law and according to our need. Now, talking about the fundamental rights. So, there are total six fundamental rights that are defined in the constitution. First is right to equality. Right to equality means every person has equal right uh, who is the citizen of India. The next is right to freedom. Right against exploitation, right against freedom of religion. Every person is free to choose their own religion. Cultural and educational rights and right to constitutional remedies. And one term, what are the fundamental duties of every citizen? Abide by the constitution and respect national flag and national anthem. Follow the ideas of freedom struggle. Protect sovereignty and integrity of India. Defend the country and render national services when called upon. Spirit of common brotherhood, preserve composite culture, preserve natural environment, develop scientific temper, safeguard public property and strive for excellence. These are the fundamental duties of every citizen. Now, let us study what do we understand by the directive principle of state policy. It is contained in the part 4 of the constitution that is article 36 to 51. The aim of this direct principle was to set up certain social and economic goals before the lawmakers to bring about social change in the country in direction of political and social economic equality. Now, social and economic charter, social order based on justice that is provided in the article 38.1 provides that the state shall strive to promote the welfare of people by securing and protecting a social order. Now, considering social security charter, what is defined in this participation of worker in management of industries article act and right to work education and public assistance cases of unemployment. Now, let us proceed further. Uh, uh, yes, uh, community welfare charter in uniform civil code that is provided in the article 44. While the state tried to reform the codify the personal laws of Hindus which is also applicable to six Jain and Buddhists. No attempt has been made to bring Muslim, Christian, Pasha under this purview of a common civil code. First is, second is, organization of agriculture and animal husbandry, protection and improvement of forest wildlife, protection of monuments of historical interest, separation of judiciary from executive article 50, promotion of international peace and security, pursuant to the direction of enriched, and organization of village panchayat. So, this directive principle of state policy means the state has to form or uh, form the policy or follow these policy and the common character should be this. Now, let us proceed further. Now, let us talk about the federal system in India. Federal system means government organize a similar to union state under central government like government uh, central like state government should be under the central government rather than individual government of the separate states. There are generally two types of states in the, in the world. The state that has only one government for the entire country which is known as unitary state. The United Kingdom has a unitary system. But there are states of United States of America and Canada which have governments at two levels. One at the central level and one at the state level. So, next is it should be a written constitution. Division of power should be between the central government, the state government and supremacy of the judiciary to interpret the constitution. So, these are the federal system of India. Now, amendment it is a uh, very important part of our Indian constitution. Amendment means if uh, sometimes the parliamentary feels that the law which is uh, now, it is not according to the law which should be, uh, which is, we can say it is outdated. So, it needs to be implemented or amended. So, that is how amendment can be done. The basic structure of constitution is unchangeable and only such amendments to the constitution allowed which do not affect its basic structure nor of its essential character. First is by simple majority of the parliament. Amendment in this category be made by a simple majority of members and voting before sending them for president assent. For example, there is a rule, uh, let we can take an example of Motor Vehicle Act. And so this tech when, act when passed in the parliament, it has to be uh, passed by the voting of the members of parliament. So it can be passed by simple majority or uh, an amendment in the motor vehicle act. Now, another is special majority of the parliament. So amendments can be made in this category by two thirds of the major total member of present voting. And voting should not be less than half the total membership of the house. So amendment, second uh, step to do amendment is the special majority of the parliament in which two thirds of the member of parliament should 
apply to this amendment if they agree to it otherwise they can reject now let us uh, study about the local government in india as we know india is a federal republic with three sphere of government that is central state and local the 73th and 74th constitution amendments give recognition and protection to local governments the local rural governments are zilla panchayat mandar or talukas panchayat or gram panchayat so these are the local uh, government in india and they have independence in their own way now let us study about the emergency provision under indian constitution so article 352 deals with the types of emergency so in this there is there are three types of emergency which we have discussed which we have discussed here first is national emergency second is president's rule and third one is financial emergency national emergency in in, in which uh, our country is in some kind of terrorist danger then we can impose the national emergency or the president rule if there is an anarchy uh, in some state then we or uh, or in country we can impose the president rule another one is financial emergency in which our country is going through uh, a financial worry times so that will be all for today's lecture thank you jai hind